All right, thanks a lot, Malaysia. Uh, I'll ask uh, you, you know Andrew if he's ready for us. And just to mention here that, uh, I mean, for people that have not really dove into um, this space of AI, it might seem like uh, stuff that Malaysia was doing as trivial, but uh, quite involving. Uh, he's not a domain expert. He's had to interact with a number of uh, you know experts um, on the other side of town at UTH. So quite exciting stuff here. And Andrew, I think, is ready for us. Over to you, Mr. Shawasa. All right, thank you. Um, can everybody else see my screen? Yes, we can. All right, so, um, like mentioned, uh, my name is Andrew Shaw, and I'm going to be continuing from where Mr. Mugumara left off. And, um, this part of uh, the presentation is simply going to focus on the implementation of the intelligent dark computers, uh, which involves the plugins that were built for uh, the Ozank Pax platform that is currently deployed at the UTH. Um, and I'll explain or go into details more as we uh, proceed. So, um, I'm part of the Enterprise Medical Imaging in Zambia project, as Dr. Piri mentioned. And most of the details I think you can find uh, using the link I was given. So I'll just go straight into um, the important part of the presentation itself. So um, coming to the implementation of intelligent DICOM viewers, um, it is important to note that uh, automated image interpretation is crucial when it comes to the interpretation of images or medical images in a health setup or in a health environment. So uh, if some of you are familiar with the radiological workflow or what is known as the radiological workflow, um, which is simply this uh, process where, for example, if you are a patient, and you happen to go to the hospital, let's say you have a broken bone and you want an examination taken. So the radiological workflow simply involves uh, the processes from the time you are examined where an image is taken of you and that broken part of the body and the processing of that image as well as that image being uh, taken to either a radiologist for interpretation where they have to tell uh, or find out what is wrong with that particular part of your body and then it also includes uh, things like transcribing reports for the same case that they've handled and ordering an entry so this is a summary of the radiological uh, workflow and our part is focused on the image interpretation which is helping these people that do the interpret interpretation of images uh, work faster and more efficiently or, and more accurately, sorry. So, um, you will find that there are challenges that are faced by radiologists, especially in Zambia. As the previous speaker mentioned, we have uh, a serious problem of uh, shortage of expertise uh, in this department or in these areas. And you find that the few people that are there uh, are very few people that are trained in this area. And that also means that we also have a very few people with a certain level of experience to work on these images. So that becomes challenging if they have to go through this process of interpreting the images manually. You also find that the manual process itself is time consuming because a person has to sit on a desk uh, many hours trying to look at an image and see what's wrong with certain parts of that image and this can also cause a cognitive overload where you are fatigued or you are tired from time to time due to long hours that you spend looking on images trying to figure out uh, what could be the problem. So this solution now comes in, which is the implementation of the plugin uh, to enable semi-automated image interpretation. So we did this with the uh, Ozark Pass platform. Uh, as I mentioned before, which is uh, 
the platform that was deployed within UTH. So what was done was this Pax platform comes with embedded viewers within it. These viewers can be used to open and view images for those people that are responsible for the interpretation of these images. So the intelligent DICOM viewer aspect comes in by enabling these existing DICOM viewers with uh, AI capabilities. So it ties to the topic that was previously discussed by uh, Malaysia here, where there are models that have been built which are, can help with the interpretation of medical images. So let's say for a case like a pneumonia, there are models that have been built where if you feed it an image, it can tell you if the image you've given it is likely to have pneumonia or not. So with such kind of solutions, uh, this particular implementation came in to try and find a way of enabling these existing DICOM viewers uh, to communicate with the same AI model. So uh, that connection actually acts as a bridge between the AI viewer and the AI model for automatic uh, interpretation. And it also enables us to generate annotations as the AI model is processing the images. So if you're using that DICOM viewer, for example, in this case, and that DICOM viewer happens to have this plugin, uh, you have the option of requesting for annotations using that plugin. So in the actual sense, you're interacting with the plugin, which is sending messages to the AI model in the background and getting back a response and giving you those annotations in real time. And already, some of us can already see that uh, this would uh, speed up the process that would otherwise be slow without the use of such tools. So uh, there's a sample image here of what um, an annotated image would look like if you are looking at it from a viewer. And of course, we are going to give a brief demo of how this actually works after the presentation. But uh, you can see here that uh, on an image, for example, after having used the plugin, you would have an option to uh, get some bounding boxes that would point you to specific areas or areas of interest on this image. So the plugin would actually help to tell you to say, if you want to concentrate, you would, you would want to concentrate on such areas because there might be a likelihood of this area having pneumonia or this area having uh, this type of pathology. Let's say in the case that you have other models working. So um, this is an example image. And then uh, in order for this to be done, there were two modes of integration that were uh, taken into account. So as we mentioned before, we have the AI models that are doing the interpretation and we have the working DICOM viewers where the radio radiologists go and interact with these images. So in order for that seamless connection to be uh, uh, created, with the use of the plugin, uh, which was developed for this author viewer, and then this serves as an intermediary between uh, the DICOM viewer and the AI models, right? And then we also have the web service. So this web service was created uh, to facilitate uh, the transfer of data from the DICOM viewer coming from the plugin, and then it gets this data, uh, does whatever processing that has to be to be done to the images, and then feeds the data to uh, the AI models. And then when the AI model is done giving its interpretation, the service carries that data back and feeds it to the plugin that relays the information to the uh, DICOM web viewer. So these uh, technologies work hand in hand to make sure that there is a seamless connection between the viewer and the AI models, where data can be transferred back and forth. And it makes sure that the person that is working on these images has an easier time uh, working on such images. And this would actually increase or improve the turnaround time for the interpretation of medical images. So uh, obviously, this would come with benefits. And one of those benefits is that there is an improvement in terms of accuracy and efficiency of the diagnosis. So uh, the integration of AI, as well as these smart tools that enable these people to carry out their work faster, would make sure that 
there is work or uh, there is less cognitive overload going back to some of the challenges that we mentioned and it would make sure that there is less uh, errors made as a result of maybe someone being less experienced in the field or maybe someone being exhausted uh, from doing so much work. So you would have these tools which are not even uh, meant to replace the, the, the human working uh, on the images itself, but just help improve how they work. So they are there to help, and that's uh, why it is known as the semi-automated interpretation. Uh, they give assistance to whoever is doing the interpretation of images. It also helps to make better informed treatment decisions. This is also related to what we've mentioned before, because these people can get uh, access to interpretations in real time. So, which means uh, the diagnosis is going to come back faster and you would have enough time to uh, plan on the next uh, course of action if the results are coming in at a quick rate. Those are some of the benefits uh, that come with the integration of AI and these smart tools in the, in the radiological interpretation uh, process. So, um, these two, after uh, the implementation, uh, was evaluated and the evaluation was conducted uh, uh, in a controlled experiment uh, and some of the participants, or let me say the participants that were used for this evaluation were the radiologist from uh, the University Teaching Hospital. Uh, you also have radiology registrars, so these are radiologists in training. You also have general practitioners, this is uh, other doctors or physicians that might find themselves uh, working on similar cases that have to do with uh, the use of the same tools. And then after the, the, the evaluation was done of these people, uh, they were asked to access um, or fill in a term two questionnaire just to weigh their interaction with the plugin and see their perceived intention to use the tool, like if you were given a tool like this, what were the chances that you would be happy to use a tool like this? How would a tool like this improve uh, your, your work? How would a tool like this help you uh, interpret images better? So, um, yes, that is as far as the evaluation goes. <coughs> and then coming to the conclusion, um, it is safe to say that this is a very uh, promising solution and it has a lot to, to, to offer and it can bring about a great improvement when it comes to the radiological field itself. So the real-time feedback and the commission can lead to earlier treatment as mentioned before and better patient outcomes. And of course, there is continued development. Uh, for example, like uh, the previous speaker mentioned, these AI models can always uh, be improved to actually aim for higher levels of accuracy. And uh, there's still work to be done, but this uh, shows great promise. And there's a lot of uh, benefits that could come from such kind of uh, innovations. I think um, that is what I had prepared in terms of the presentation. I'll just walk you through uh, a quick demo just to see how everything works. Uh, can everyone still hear me? Just to confirm. Guess this is loud and clear, uh, uh, Andrew. All right, thank you. So uh, what we're looking at here is uh, the UTS Parts platform, as mentioned before. So this Parts platform was uh, built off of OSAC. So OSAC is the best platform that was used for this, and uh, some uh, further modifications were made. And this is the platform that you're able to see right now. So I'm just going to walk you through how one would actually get to use the tools that we've been uh, talking about. So if you come here, for example, you have an option to search for specific cases or patients and studies that you would want to work on. Assuming this person is a radiologist trying to use this platform. So we have a study like this one. And then if we search, um, and navigate to where we have the user. As mentioned before, we said 
this platform comes with uh, embedded DICOM viewers uh, that can be used to view these radiological images. So we have the Ozam web viewer here that is in yellow. Um, if you can see my cursor here. So if we try to open this image, for example, you can see uh, a plain image here. And on the top right corner there, we have some details to do with the patient. And obviously the information has been anonymized. But you can also see there on the very last line where it says AI assistant results, which is blank for now. And after requesting for these annotations, we should be able to get uh, feedback or some sort of annotation text there, which is telling us uh, details about this model and the suspected pathology, as well as some uh, bounding boxes. So this tool itself, if you pay close attention uh, to the top left panel that I've opened, there's this button here that says get annotation. So uh, what this button simply does is if we click on it, it's getting this pixel information, the information about the image and sending that information to the AI model with the use of uh, the web service that we talked about. So this uh, transaction is happening right now and you are able to get back uh, the, the feedback from the model. And this is what you end up having. Or these are, uh, these are the results that you, you, you get from the model. So as we can see, uh, we have bounding boxes on the image, which might be pointing us to areas that might be, uh, that might have a chance of having pneumonia. So if I'm a radiologist, I'm able to tell to say, okay, instead of just fidgeting around trying to see where the problem is, I can just focus on these areas and try to see if there is a problem in this specific area that I've been given. Already that improves at the time uh, that I'm going to take to just work on these images. And then if we also pay attention to the top right again, we see that we have some text in red. For example, it will tell you the pathology that is suspecting to be uh, highlighted using these bounding boxes. It will also tell you uh, the accuracy of the model itself, the precision, the recall, as well as the accuracy of the detection. So we have two models working in the background and uh, it will give you results for both of those models and uh, also include bounding boxes that are going to point you to the areas of interest. So this is briefly how the plugin works and that would conclude uh, this presentation. So if there are any questions for me or the previous speaker, yeah, I, you, you. You, you see, Andrew, thank you so much for this. I, I just wanted to mention here, uh, you, you know, seldom do you get to tell students just how good they really are, but, but I want to take this opportunity to just mention that uh, uh, the, the work that, you know, Mala is your Andrew and Eliza have been doing is nothing short of amazing. I think we are fortunate to have recruited really smart and talented students. Uh, people may think that uh, what perhaps Andrew and Mala is representing is trivial stuff. It is not. Uh, Andrew was stuck many, many times, right? Uh, it, it's taken, it's taken Andrew, for instance, uh, a little over a year, almost a year, I guess, um, to actually do this. Uh, he was doing this as part of his uh, PDIP uh, in computer science program. Um, and just to give you a bit of context as well, so if you use tools like Google Photos, for instance, uh, what you begin to realize is that uh, you may not see this here, but there's things like, uh, uh, you know, facial recognition, object. Uh, you know, recognition embedded within Google Photos. So the idea is there are models that have been implemented that do that, right? Um, you know how Google what might I detect this is your mother or something, this is your father, this is your brother, right? And cluster or tag those photos like that. What Andrew was doing is building an interface that interacts with the models, whereas Malaysia was focusing on the models. So without further ado, I, th I think what we'll do is we invite questions. I don't know if people have specific questions for us. There's a ton of information available on the website, but just in case you need clarification on the wonderful work that uh, we have been doing for the last two years, please 